carità Stata con me Non me la sa Fammi penare Fammi passare Fammi danna Ma dimmi sì Morre per te Vive per te dice in parte il sentimento di sentimento cioè, però anche c'è cioè, una, una sorta di critica velata sì, di satira sì. di quanto questo amore possa condizionare poi la vita sì, di, sì, di sì, un certo, uomo certo. Eh, questo ci sono alcune l'amore del bambino per sua madre che è un amore molto eh, of course the, the love that this child feels for his mother is absolute and there's nothing morbid about it it's just you know the overwhelming love that a child feels for the mother but then the real tragedy is the death and the early disappearance of this woman and there's no indication of anything else and we don't have any different clues for as long as he's a child he's just a little child who's unable to stand the idea that his mother is no longer with him and tries to defend himself as much as he can in order to be able to survive when once he become adult at that point of course we tend to stress moments and aspects that seems to contradict the feeling that he is experiencing we, he goes through a long stage where he's absent he's not there you know he almost forgot the mother or suppressed the idea of her disappearance until he comes back into himself when he suffers his panic attack and and then we have a series of contradictory moments like the letter that he writes and once it's read by the actual uh, woman that is um, addressed to uh, she, she seems to contradict and there's an ironic twist an ironic moment at that point or, um, when the other woman talks about the same letter or when the old, old journalist the old editor she seems to criticize what he's written he himself is very sincere, you know, in his feelings, more or less acknowledged by himself. It's the ambiguity comes from the way people seem to contest what he's doing or what he's feeling. The story of Massimo Gramellini himself, you know, is also, of course, the author of the, of the book, uh, starts in professional terms with him being a sports critic and reviewer. And then, thanks to a series of lucky circumstances, he ended up becoming a political journalist himself. And, of course, when you have to make an adaptation from a book to the big screen, there's a problem of changing the language into a filmic language. And you are obliged to say within that time frame of two hours and we couldn't go through his whole career in, in detail so we decided to portrait the first article that he writes when the girlfriend is at a Buddhist meditation or something and then the encounter with this CEO that ends up committing suicide uh, 
when he was still writing sports reviews, and that man tells him, I like the way you write about sports, because, you know, it's very sort of dry style, very essential. And then, through a series of steps that are dealt with through ellipses, we get to the point of going to Sarajevo as a sort of war correspondent. But it is true that Massimo Gramellini is really a self-made man coming from a family of humble origin. His father was a public official and uh, he wanted to become a journalist and he managed to do so because he has an ability to write in a journalistic style. But that has little to do with uh, his personal events. I was uh, very much impressed by this perfect, uh, blissful happiness which is suddenly interrupted of, with the tragedy, of course, of, of, the, of the death of the mother. It's such a perfect and blissful happiness that is so, it's rare indeed. It's not in my experience as a child. I've never had this kind of love from my mother, not because she didn't love me, but she was busy trying to raise her children and make ends meet. And it's this sort of broken myth of the mother which impressed me the, the most. And I was also struck by the reactions that Massimo as a child had to uh, this twist of events. First of all, by denying the death of the mother and then by asking a sort of fantasy figure like Balthagol to help him and to protect him. And this is what attracted me. And then, of course, uh, Massimo adult uh, he tries to forget, you know, he tries to obliterate and to delete his past, but the past in the form of a ghost keeps on haunting him, you know, it's still, it's still there and demands that he comes to term with, uh, with that loss, something that he's always tried to avoid and that he looks at reality. And uh, uh, because this is our destiny, I mean, if we pretend things do not exist, they will come back to hold us uh, and that would be even more devastating. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful film. Grazie. Ah, thank you very much. You. Thank you. Thank you.